March 1940, 20,000 feet above the English Channel, a Spitfire dived after a German BF-109. The British pilot squeezed the trigger. Nothing. His Merlin engine coughed once, then died completely. In seconds, his aircraft stalled. He had no choice but to pull up, helpless, as the German fighter rolled away, untouched. This wasn't pilot error. It wasn't bad luck. It was a design flaw, one that nearly changed the course of the air war. The problem lay in the heart of the Spitfire and Hurricane, the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. It was a masterpiece of engineering, powerful, elegant, and reliable, except for one fatal weakness. When a pilot pushed the aircraft into a negative G maneuver, like diving after an enemy, the Merlin's carburetor flooded with fuel. The engine would choke and die, leaving the pilot powerless in midair. And at 20,000 feet in combat, even a second of silence could mean death. The Luftwaffe's BF-109 had no such problem. Its Daimler-Benz DB-601 engine used direct fuel injection, meaning it could dive, roll, or turn in any direction without missing a beat. German pilots learned to exploit this weakness ruthlessly. They'd roll inverted, push their noses down, and dive away, knowing their British pursuers couldn't follow. For the Royal Air Force, it was infuriating. For the pilots, it was deadly. They could outfly the enemy, outgun them, but not outengineer them. And Britain didn't have time for redesigns or replacements. The Battle of Britain was looming. Every Spitfire counted. Every second in the air mattered. The answer didn't come from a general, or a factory, or a commander. It came from a young woman in a leather jacket with a mind built for machines. Her name was Beatrice Tilly Schilling. Born in 1909 in Waterlooville, England, Tilly grew up surrounded by noise and motion. By 16, she was taking apart motorbikes in her family garage. By her 20s, she was racing them and winning. At a time when women weren't even expected to drive, she was setting lap records. After earning her degree in electrical engineering from the University of Manchester, she joined the Royal Aircraft Establishment in Farnborough in 1936, one of Britain's top aviation research centers. When war broke out, she was already one of the best mechanical minds in the country. When reports began flooding in about the Spitfire engine failures, Tilly didn't wait for permission. She studied the carburetor design of the Merlin engine, the SU model. Its problem was simple, but devastating. Under negative G, fuel surged uncontrollably through the float chamber, flooding the engine. Every other engineer saw it as a limitation. Tilly saw it as a challenge. Her solution wasn't complicated. It wasn't even large enough to fill a matchbox. It was a small brass washer, a restrictor plate with a hole drilled through the center. That single opening limited the amount of fuel flow. It prevented the carburetor from flooding during negative G dives, letting the engine keep running long enough for the pilot to recover. A fix so simple, yet so effective, it seemed almost ridiculous. Tilly called it the RAE restrictor. Pilots called it something else, Miss Schilling's orifice. They laughed at the name, but no one laughed at the results. In early 1941, Tilly packed a small box of brass washers, climbed into her car, and began visiting air bases across England herself. She went from station to station, Biggin Hill, Northolt, Duxford, working directly with mechanics and pilots to install the restrictors. It took her hours per aircraft, working in freezing hangars, oil staining her overalls. One pilot later said, she'd arrive with her toolkit, smile, and tell you she was here to save your engine, and maybe your life. Soon, the difference was undeniable. Spitfires and hurricanes could finally follow German fighters into dives. They could keep their engines roaring through negative G-turns. They could fight back. The Luftwaffe lost their escape tactic, and the RAF gained something far greater. Confidence. The Battle of Britain had already been won by then, but aerial combat over Europe continued. Thanks to Schilling's fix, RAF pilots survived more dogfights and scored more victories than before. Records show that the restrictor allowed smoother operations and reduced engine failure complaints dramatically a temporary but vital advantage until a new pressure carburetor design was ready. It's estimated that Schilling's small brass washer directly contributed to keeping hundreds of Spitfires and Hurricanes combat ready during 1941, the year Britain desperately needed every plane it could get. As the war progressed, Tilly stayed at Farnborough, working on other performance and safety innovations. 
After the conflict, she remained one of the most respected engineers in the Royal Aircraft Establishment. She later received the Order of the British Empire for her wartime service, though she never sought recognition. In interviews years later, she brushed off her fame with typical modesty. She once said, It was only a little thing, but it did the job. That little thing may have saved Britain's air superiority, because in 1940, wars weren't just fought by men in cockpits or soldiers on the ground. They were fought by minds, engineers, scientists, and innovators who turned ideas into survival. Beatrice Tilly Schilling wasn't a soldier. She wasn't on the front line, but her invention, a brass washer smaller than a coin, kept Britain's finest pilots alive long enough to keep fighting. And in the story of the Second World War, sometimes the smallest piece of metal could carry the weight of a nation's hope. Beatrice Tilly Schilling, the engineer who saved the Spitfire and changed the course of air combat forever.